Oh my. Curve shears. <laughs> Here's the little note. This came from a sharpener today. It says, shears drop and I can't get the tips to cut correctly. Please sharpen and align correctly. And he sent me a little smiley face. I won't show you the name, but there's the smiley face and the note. And these are the shears and they are gem shears. And uh, we're going to get into these and see if there's something I can improve on these. But first of all, I want you to look at this. These are $89 shears. $89 shears. That's retail. That means wholesale they would be like $45. Maybe they're expecting too much out of these. What do you think? Let's look at them anyway. So what are we starting with? Let's see how bad these little babies are. So when I'm Testing curve shears. You know, if you've watched any of my videos, and I have a lot of them, um, I'm using toilet tissue. Now, you see, it's not cutting dry. If you're, these are groomer scissors, it's definitely not cutting here. It doesn't seem to be the edge because it feels pretty sharp. It's the alignment. I hate doing anything to the alignment. So, first of all, can you see where it crosses too much, almost touches? I'm going to work on the handle. These curved shears, usually you can bend them very easy. These, with them being a lower quality, probably bend easy. So, first of all, let me bend the handle. I don't think that's going to make the difference and fix it, but we'll start there. So I want to bend the handle in and get rid of this little space there. So I make my handle bender like an arrow, pointing the way I want my handle to bend, and I squeeze. And I'm feeling it move, but I'm doing it very, very carefully. I almost squeeze too much. I think it's okay. Did you notice I put took the ring out because the ring, the rubbery ring, may make it feel like it's bending when it's not, and you could bend too hard and pop it. So I'm sure this didn't make a difference, but let's cut anyway. Magic does happen. Nope. So these cut down to here. So this is why you need hands-on training. I'm going to show you this, but I don't think it's going to show up on the video. If I close this, and if I was holding it to the light, I would see the blades touching at one spot all the way down. And then when it gets here, it's going to be like a wider spot that's touching. And this is where the area is. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try bending it. This, oh, we sell both of these made by two different companies. This is the one they gave me in Germany. Um, as you see, the little slot is even bigger than this biggest slot here. When I went to, um, I was able to train in the Jaguar factory, and this is what they gave me to bend with. But I have to put it in a vise, and these are convenient because they're <laughs> on this board here. So, my idea is to bend See, right here is where it's not cutting. So I want to bend behind here and bend that up toward that blade. And it's always good to wear glasses when you're doing this. Because you never know. And I'm not bending in one little spot. You see how I'm moving it along? Let's see if I've improved it any. Not really. I'm always afraid to bend it too much. I am not a very brave sharpener. Now you see how I'm holding it here. Not back here on the handle. Because I don't want to bend the handle. I want to be bending the blade. 
usually you can pretty easily bend a curved shear without a lot of worry, especially if they're cheaper ones. Um, you still ought to talk to the customer. But this customer said to fix alignment. So I'm going to take it that that's what I can do. Oh, it's better. Do you see that? So now it's here. In fact, let's mark it. Let's mark it so we know exactly where it's. we've got it to. So, cut. No cut. No cut. And no cut. So, this area doesn't cut. That area doesn't cut. This one does. That's where I was working on it. Alright, so, even though it's this blade uh, I've got marked, I'm going to be working on bringing this blade right at this area up. Okay, let's see if we got this tip to cutting. Oh, look at there. Look at there. Right there, the very tippy tip, it's not cutting. So I've got that. I think I... Oh, yeah, when I bent the handle, I bent it too far. <laughs> Let's bend it back. So I've got the tip working. That should be better. Fix the tip. Yay! Let's see if it cuts hair. Pulls right there at the very tippy tip. But I'm not too worried about that. We can always shorten it that little bit. Let's see. It's not great. Maybe just a little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. I'm not going way on to these slots. And I'm staying with a yellow one because it's a little less risky in my opinion. You don't know how much I hate doing this. Do not like cutting. Do not like bending scissors. Okay, that's cutting to the tip. Now, this middle part. To stop and think which way I want to bend it. I really don't do this that much. <laughs> Stop and think if I bend it this way. It's going to move it up. Let's try it that way. Because it wasn't working bending the other way, was it? This is all trial and error. Those of you that do this all the time, don't laugh at me. Okay, that did it. So I'm bending increasing the curve here. I took the curve out there. More curve. So more curve here, less curve there. Still pulling a little bit at the tip. I'm always really scared when I get down to these smaller slots. Okay, I'm going to call that it. Now, I'm going to sharpen it. So, I was just at a sharpening convention. New Orleans, the IBSA. I was one of the speakers, but another speaker that was there 
was uh, someone that sharpened just for the dog groomers. And he was saying that, especially on these cheaper scissors, they don't hold an edge if you've got something that's a 600 grit. Let me go with that one. Um, they don't hold an edge with the sharp edge that comes from the factory. So you really don't want to put the factory edge onto it. I'm going to go, and this is my Cymex Junior. I don't think I'm even going to use the clamp on this thing. I'm just going to put an edge on it. smooth it out with my stone and go with that. So this is a broken arc home. <laughs> um, they come full size like this. They come in, uh, what is it, 1,000 and 3,000 I think that one is. But I'm going to use the finer one and I want it wet. And I'm, without taking it apart, I'm just going to work that edge. And then see the side is curved this way, and I'm working that edge. Might use my nail buffer on this thing too. 3,000 grit. Make it nice and smooth. And power forward. I want good lighting here. And I have a cushion plate so that I can keep that tip up in the air. I could also use my curve adapter for this too. I think I will. I think I will for that blade because this is pretty long, but I can do this blade without the curve adapter. So I'm coming in and I'm going to do a pretty blunt angle. And you see how I'm curving it around? I've got to burr all the way down. Oh, not at the tip. Not at the tip, tip, tip. This is probably maybe a 20 degree angle. I'm not using my clamp, so I don't know exactly. Still don't have the tip. You can see like a little sparkle there at the tip. That looks good. Here's my curve adapter. This is a worn 80. I'm not going to stay with that. See, the advantage of this one is now when I'm doing this blade, I have a place for that to go in the center there. I want to do a little bit finer, I can switch out. You can cut any grit you want. This is a worn 800. And I'll pop this on here. Try to get the same angle. You can hear the difference in the sound, can't you? At that tip, you need to lift it up a little bit to make sure you get it. And I think I'm going to go with that. I'm going to get a paper towel and I'm going to cut my burr off. I cut a little bit, a little bit more, and then all the way down to the tip. I'm 
I might smooth it off with my nail buffer. Let's try it. If it cuts dry tissue, I'm pretty happy. Um, I'm not going to try to do wet. <laughs> ah, sometimes, sometimes. Let's try it wet. It may not do it wet. It's okay. And as I said, at the convention I was at, Paul, who's from um, California, he does a lot of grooming shears and uh, clipper blades. And he does them pretty fast. He has some vans that go in. And he was saying that, you know, basically the groomers are only using this much of the shear. So if this part doesn't cut, don't, don't beat yourself up about it. Especially if it's an $89 shear. So if it cuts from here to here, and let's see how it cuts fur. I'll pull some of this fur up here. Here we go. All right. And I'm going to cut in the middle. Looks like pretty good. I'm going to turn it up. I'm going to say I did it. What do you think? <laughs> Drum roll, please. Okay. So I'm going to clean the red Sharpie off, oil them, double check the adjustment, but they seem adjusted right. And I'm going to send these back to the sharpener. And um, hopefully this video will help them if they run across this. Wish I could say this was a rare situation, but it's pretty common. You're just going to have to take the risk, do the bending, and that's the downside of uh, grooming shears, that you're going to have to bend them, especially these curved ones, but the upside is usually they're soft enough metal, you can do it.